Hi, Eileen. How are you? Good, Emily. Good. Hi, Jane. Hey. <laughs> how are you? Sorry? Thanks for making this happen. It sounds like it's going to be pretty good. Uh, uh, it's always helpful to get tips. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. What What is behind you, Jane? Oh, it's a photograph of a installation near Paso Robles, an art installation. And um, it's beautiful. You walk through it. And yeah, so there's a photograph. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really pretty. Huh. Hi, Star. Welcome. Hi. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we usually have folks uh, kind of, you know, join a little late, that sort of thing. Um, uh, so we can uh, uh, wait just a couple minutes, and and then uh, I do want to, you know, be respectful of folks' time, and we only have an hour, so I will go ahead and get started in just a couple minutes. Um, and uh, today's webinar is being recorded. We had um, almost thirty people register, so I am expecting some more people. Um, but I think a lot of people registered just in order to get the email afterwards with the recording. <laughs> so. Uh, and the slides. So I, uh, I expect that, you know, we, we may be maybe twice as big as this, uh, but, uh, um, but with other folks, you know, watching later. So, yeah. Um, okay, I might give folks maybe like one more minute and then go ahead and get started. Um, so Eileen and Jane, I, I know you from our fiscal sponsorship program. Um, Star, I'm not sure I've met you before. How did you hear about today's uh, um, webinar? Hi, um, because I'm on your mailing list. Um, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it's in line with a with a project that I'm doing. Great. It's very apropos to the time right now. Very good. And uh, where do you hail from? from Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts. Great. I was just there uh, two weekends ago for my anniversary. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, tried to hike up the uh, the fire tower, uh, but it was the first mm -hmm. hike of the year, so we didn't make it all the way to the top. <laughs> uh, yes, I think. Shaka Bona. What a pretty name. <laughs> That's my son's uh, name, this is his, his Zoom. <laughs> oh, my, okay. My name is Patricia. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How did you I, hear about our webinar today? Um, I got an email. Great. You're on our so, email list then. Yeah. So I decided to jump on and see, you know, uh, kind of learn more about Zoom meeting. Great. And where are you hailing from? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Wonderful. Welcome. So we have California and we have Philadelphia. We have Massachusetts, uh, Western Massachusetts specifically. And Eileen, are you in Iowa? No, I'm in Newton. I'm near Boston, just west oh, of Boston. Got it. Okay. So I, I, and I, I grew up in South Hadley, not far from where you probably are. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm currently in Northampton, although uh, the Peace Development Fund's office is in Amherst, Massachusetts. Um, and Meryl, welcome. Uh, how did you hear about today's webinar? Um, I am with Christian Community Action's Mothers and Others for Justice. And in the past, we were funded by Haymarket. And I don't know how I got it, on it, but I'm interested. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, this is the Peace Development Fund, not Haymarket, but Haymarket is a oh, I'm fabulous. Sorry. That's yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> They're a fabulous partner uh, in in the world of philanthropy, uh, right, and so, it's so. likely that you were funded by us both. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, welcome. Our, our group was also funded by Peace and Development, so that's probably why I got the email. Great, great. Um, Okay, well, uh, just a, a note that I am recording today's uh, webinar because we had uh, almost 30 people register. So I'm sure that a lot of folks uh, will be wanting to uh, get the slides and, uh, and watch later. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started, um, but it, thank you all for being here. And, uh, and we're gonna do a little bit of small group work later. So um, 
So you'll get to meet each other um, um, uh, at that time too. Okay, so I am gonna share my screen and, uh, and we'll get started. There, can you all see? Great. So uh, the idea is, yes, to get some tips about online, how to run an online meeting, but in addition to uh, how to run an online meeting, we also want our online meetings to be engaging. Um, as I said at the beginning of uh, uh, yeah, when folks were signing on, my name is Emily Serafi Cox. I am a foundation officer with the Peace Development Fund. I've been with PDF for a little over a year and a half. Previous to, uh, to being at, uh, to joining the staff at Peace Development Fund, I was a community organizer for 15 years, predominantly in Minneapolis and San Diego. So uh, uh, I have uh, experience in starting small grassroots organizations, in, um, in doing community-based uh, budgeting processes uh, or community-based planning processes, um, campaigns for um, you know, policy campaigns, um, uh, both community-based and, uh, and more, mm, what they nowadays would call grass tops. I preferred always to, to do grassroots uh, organizing rather than grass tops. And um, uh, so that, that is part of where my experience with online meetings comes from. Uh, for uh, several years, I uh, coordinated a statewide uh, coalition in, uh, in California made up of residents of affordable housing communities who were advocating for more affordable housing in the state of California. And so uh, California is, you know, bigger than many countries. So uh, it was definitely a place where we needed to utilize uh, online meetings in order to have any sort of leadership uh, uh, participation uh, in our organization from folks on the ground. Uh, so I've been, you know, most everybody uh, uh, marks the beginning of the pandemic as when they started doing Zoom meetings. I had been doing Zoom meetings for years before that uh, and, uh, and, and saw at that time how they could bring people together from uh, diverse geographies as well as uh, allow people to engage in meetings that they otherwise couldn't attend uh, due to uh, either scheduling conflicts or, um, or uh, problems with, uh, with transportation. And so I actually saw it uh, as a tool for engaging um, the, the, you know, the grassroots in my community um, um, and, uh, and continue to see that opportunity now. Of course, there are challenges in terms of who has access to the internet and that sort of thing. Um, but one of the, the, the things that we really emphasized with our organizing was how you could have Zoom on, not just on your desktop or your laptop computer, because not everybody has those, but on your smartphone. Gosh, I don't even have my phone with me. Otherwise, I would hold it up. Um, that that you know you can download the Zoom app there, and folks can participate in or you know whatever online meeting platform you're using. Folks can participate in the online meeting from their uh, from their smartphone, and um, more people have smartphones than have desktop and laptop computers. So um, that, that was one thing that we utilized for, um, to increase access. Um, so I'm gonna go through uh, kind of some more presentation-y uh, type things, and then we're gonna uh, break out and do kind of an activity and have some discussion. Uh, and then of course, uh, I'll leave time for questions at the end. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, so we've all been in both of these types of meetings, I think. Uh, a great meeting is where folks are engaged. They're, they may not all be smiling at the same time, but you know, they're, they're looking at the screen, they're participating, they're, um, they care about what's going on. They may not be participating verbally, and we'll get to that. There are other ways to participate in an online meeting. 
Um, and then of course, we've all been in lousy online meetings uh, uh, where, where uh, you're just bored to tears <laughs> or you completely zone out and have no idea what's going on in the meeting. Uh, so I'm wondering um, if any of you who have been either in a great meeting or a lousy meeting want to share a little bit about what you found to be either great or lousy about uh, the online meetings that you've participated in. Uh, yeah, Meryl. Okay, so um, without naming names, because that would be rude. Sure. I'm in a monthly meeting where I feel like I could read the notes and get the same thing out of it than I have to listen to for an, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I have more questions about that, but I think we'll get there. Uh, Eileen? Yeah, um, I have to admit, I really enjoyed a four-part series because we broke into rooms of two and three. Uh, there were quite a few of us. I mean, we're talking about uh, 60 people. Uh, we broke into small rooms at least twice during the, uh, sometimes three times within the course of the two hours. Uh, they just lasted five or, or eight minutes, but uh, we felt like we made a connection with somebody that was, in, in most cases, far away mm -hmm. and had a very different uh, viewpoint. That was very stimulating and kept me going. Yeah. Um, Kent and then Jane. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Kent, no, here. Uh, one of the things that I, I noticed in some uh, Zoom meetings is that uh, people can get a computer face. And if they're on the Zoom meeting, but they're actually doing something else on their computer, like looking at their email or doing a Sudoku, then they get this kind of dead-eyed expression, which is very different from the people, all the happy people that you've got pictured here. Yes. <laughs> and when you're in a live meeting, you're actually in the room, you actually at least try to look like you're present and, and paying attention. And so I think it's a good ethic to develop that people actually have to be present in a Zoom meeting. And hey, if you want to do something else, well, you can turn your video off. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Jane? Well, I agree with Kent. I actually don't like being in meetings where people, um, where it's an active meeting requiring input for people to turn their video off. Um, and also meetings where a person dominates the conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Meryl, did you have more to say? Yeah, I, I, one thing that I like and one thing I don't like, um, I, 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 I'm part of a, a weekly service that is very, very witty um, PowerPoint presentation. They just always add a lot to it. And Jane, this is your your background is perfect, but very often people's background they like the face fades in and out, and it's so you know, or cuts off a piece of their head, and it's very <laughs> distracting. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter uh, participates in online class, of course, and uh, she uh, loves to do the backgrounds. And she has her background as a, a savanna scene from, I don't, you know, uh, some nature video or something. And then she has an overlay on her face that uh, puts cat ears and whiskers on her. Uh, so she, she says that she then is a lion out uh, in the savanna um, and has renamed herself Queen uh, Metzli of something or other. I am yeah. super surprised that her, that her teachers have allowed her to do this because I do also agree with you that it is quite distracting. So <laughs> um, uh, yes, okay. Well, uh, I think that it's likely that we all have participated in, uh, in online meetings and had kind of an idea of what we would like to uh, improve on uh, or take away from some of those meetings and can put in our own meetings. Um, I'm gonna next talk a little bit about 
this is actually something that uh, doesn't have to be an online meeting. Um, it's some, it's a kind of a, um, a technique that you can use in any sort of uh, meeting. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that was there. That, that was really cool, that animation. I didn't put it there. I borrowed this, uh, this uh, parts of this presentation uh, from a colleague of mine. So, um, so the idea of pop is that the group who is meeting needs to be focused on the same goal in any planning or decision making process. Obviously, there are other reasons to have an online meeting. These days, we play board games via online meeting. We uh, we maybe have you know check ins with our boss via online meeting or what have you. But um, but for most of us, if we're if we're doing like a community based online meeting or you know a board of directors, uh, a, a, a whatever sort of uh, decision making process, we want to um, take the time to define what our purpose is for the meeting, what the outcomes are going to be for the meeting, and what is the process that we're going to use to 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 make that happen. And as I said, this is something that is needed for any in person meeting as well. Um, and, and can help alleviate that thing that Meryl was talking about, about that I could read the minutes and I wouldn't have to sit through the, uh, the, the meeting. For one thing, Meryl, that actually speaks to good minutes taking. <laughs> uh, not all me meetings have, uh, have good minutes like that, but also it speaks to maybe a lack of um, of, of process around decision making that, um, that the, the group is perhaps just hearing report outs and updates um, rather than uh, having a clear purpose uh, with defined outcomes and, uh, and fruitful discussion. Uh, so I'm going to dig a little bit more into uh, the th this pop idea. Um, the purpose is really defining why is it important to talk about what we're whatever decision it is that we need to make, mm -hmm. and then the outcomes are what. Uh, so uh, you have the why, the what, and then the last one is the how. So the what is what is it that we most need to accomplish. <laughs> Uh, at the end of this meeting, what will we take away from it? Uh, and then the process is how will we accomplish that? And uh, this says that each layer builds on the one before it. Um, if, if we you know, make the plan about how, but we haven't decided what it is that we need to accomplish, then, then our, our process is not going to be uh, as useful. And I think uh, the other thing that's key to this is that everybody involved in the decision making should be on the same page about uh, about each of these elements. And in some meetings, you can go over the the pop at the beginning of the meeting. I've seen people implement this in their in their meetings, where you know at the beginning when everybody's saying hello and uh, and doing introductions that they. Um, uh, that that after you know that kind of warm up time, then they go over their pop so that everybody can be focused. And uh, I think that that will also uh, you know especially for for meetings where a decision needs to be made, that that can alleviate some of this computer face that Kent Kent was talking about. That uh, that if people are engaged in what is being discussed that they are less likely to be doing Sudoku. <laughs> uh, so an example of a purpose uh, of a meeting is perhaps to convene a regional group of, of the organization's members to plan a campaign against foreclosures and support families who are going through the foreclosure proceedings. So this is just a, an example that I took from, uh, from uh, various parts of my organizing past. Uh, so here we are convening a, a group that doesn't probably usually interact with each other because they're a regional group, 
um, of members from this one organization, but they probably do know each other because they're all members of the organization. They've probably been in meetings before and they are planning to plan a campaign um, and uh, yeah, in order to, uh, to end foreclosures and support families who are currently going through it. So there's, uh, they have a, a purpose um, um, for, for, the, for their gathering, why they're doing it. Um, and then there, uh, an example of their outcome is that af after this meeting, they will have gained a, a deeper understanding of organizing. They will deepen their understanding of housing issues. They'll strengthen relationships between each other. They'll deepen trust and move toward more collaboration. And that the organization will adopt a campaign and program for the coming year. So this is a, uh, probably gonna be a longer meeting in order to accomplish all of these outcomes. Um, but we, we wanna think about not just, you know, from that first purpose, you would think, oh, well, the outcome is gonna just be to have this campaign and adopt a plan. But there are other outcomes that should come out of the meeting as well, including to, uh, to have um, the, the understanding and leadership of, of the members to be deepened, as well as the relationships and trust between uh, the members. So um, that, you know, by working together, we strengthen our ability to continue to work together. And um, so in order to, to, uh, to realize these outcomes, we can't just then have um, you know, welcome and introductions and okay, here's the plan, let's vote on it. You know, if, if, if the only outcome that we had was to adopt a campaign and a program plan, then we would do just, you know, introductions and then here's, you know, the, the staff member is going to present the plan and then we'll vote on it. Uh, maybe have some discussion and question and answer. But because we have these other outcomes, we need a different sort of process. So here is one example of the process. So we have our welcome and introductions. We have a why are we here? So this is a, a kind of some context around the history of housing, the history of movements, um, ideas about how power works in relation to foreclosures. Uh, so it, it sets the stage and gets everybody's brains cooking and maybe gets folks a little angry because that's how we we plan a campaign is is you know folks being a little angry um but also so that folks can learn from the past about what has been tried before what has worked before what hasn't worked before what can we do again or what do we want to leave behind take a break very important this is going to be a long meeting so we need to take a break uh, and then group work. I heard, uh, I don't remember who it was talking about how great breakout rooms are. I think it was Eileen. Um, breakout, I'll talk about breakout rooms later, um, but this uh, is a, a really good time to, uh, to do breakout rooms uh, because we're gonna do a brainstorm. So, um, so my plan here was to have the participants in this meeting to go off into little groups and have their own little brainstorms about what the foreclosure campaign and program plan could look like. So uh, uh, we've, we've started the juices flowing by, uh, by educating ourselves about the history and the problem and the issue. And now we're brainstorming and, and moving those ideas into something more concrete. Um, in order to develop the plan, but then we need that sort of report back to coalesce us all together. Um, and so then that's where we, we start to build the framework of the campaign. Everybody feels like their ideas and their friends' ideas and their neighbors' ideas are being heard in this process. Uh, and, and they can um, they can see their fingerprints on the final uh, the final product. 
Uh, and then we talk about next steps and we wrap up and we talk about, okay, here's our plan, you know, and, and maybe at that point, then the group uh, 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 puts their, their thumbs up for the plan. I mean, obviously this is a very simplified agenda for what potentially would be a very complicated uh, uh, meeting, but, um, but this is just kind of to give you an idea of, of what something like that could look like. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. More animations. That was amazing. Okay. So this is going back over it. I don't need that slide. I can take that one out next time. So this then is a little bit of a checklist of kind of things to make sure to do uh, both before and during your meeting. So we're going to start out with before. Always conduct Pre, a pre-meeting with the folks who are going to be leading the meeting. And maybe this is stuff you already do, but you know, it's a, a little bit of a review. And then one-on-one -on -one check ins. If you're having a meeting with 60 people, you probably won't be able to check in with all 60 of them one-on-one. -on -one. But if you're having a meeting with six people and you, uh, you know that there's going to be a contentious issue, it can be a really, really good idea to do one-on-one -on -one check ins with every single person uh, because you want to you want to get a lay uh, uh, or an understanding of of what is happening, uh, you know, out there uh, in people's minds about this maybe contentious issue. Uh, it can also be a good opportunity to understand what people's concerns are before the, uh, the, the meeting comes up so that maybe uh, information can be provided to assuage their concerns or uh, maybe changes can be made to the plan in order to address their concerns. Um, you also can, uh, it's an opportunity to, to, you know, some people, uh, they see uh, information, they can read it really quickly while people are talking and they, then they can right away give, uh, give feedback about it. Other people need a lot of time to think and process. And some people are not good at processing information that they receive via email in written form. Um, uh, I referenced my daughter earlier, my daughter is dyslexic. And I know that if she is ever on a board of directors, she's going to need information provided to her in an oral fashion because in order for her to be able to show up and provide uh, information uh, or feedback in the strongest way possible, because that's how her brain thinks best is with oral communication. I might be a little bit the same way, um, that, that through conversation is how I understand information best. I, uh, I, I don't read the textbook, I watch the uh, PBS documentary. <laughs> um, so I think those one-on-one -on -one check ins are a really good opportunity then for people to be able to uh, access the information to get ready for the meeting as well. Um, being clear on roles and the agenda. Um, so roles within an in-person meeting, uh, a lot of them are similar to an online meeting, but there are some roles that are different. Um, and we can talk a little bit about that in a couple minutes. Um, definitely show up with a good attitude, especially if you are leading this meeting. You know, uh, uh, Kent was talking about how, oh yeah, meetings, you know, people don't really all smile at the same time like they did in that picture. It's so true, right? But if you're the one who is leading the meeting, you better be smiling because <laughs> it helps give the whole meeting a more positive, uh, a, a more positive attitude. And I know that it can be really hard to project your, uh, your, your personality over that screen. Um, but to the, to the best of your ability, you know, show up with a positive attitude and, and, and make people feel like they're in the same room with you, even if they're not. Um, establish community agreements. 
So uh, I, it looks to me like the animation is a little messed up on this one. I must have messed it up when I was editing it. Um, but so this is something that we do for a lot of in-person meetings. But I think that you know some of the things that y'all mentioned at the beginning um, would be really important to include in uh, in establishing community agreements for outline uh, online meetings. Um, you know, stay engaged. Maybe a, uh, the community uh, agreement for that meeting might be keep your camera on unless you're eating or let us know if you have to step away. Let us know if you have to, you know, do something else, that sort of thing. Um, step up, step back uh, is a really good uh, uh, community agreement to have to avoid the folks who dominate the conversation. Um, it doesn't always work because you can have the community agreement of step up, step back, which is that folks who don't normally talk as much will step up and share their, uh, their wisdom and folks who normally talk way more than everybody else, that's me, uh, step back and, um, and uh, uh, allow room for other folks. Um, you might have a community agreement about no distracting backgrounds. <laughs> Um, you definitely want to, at the beginning of the meeting, do a logistics check. Uh, like, hey, does everybody know how to use the chat? Do you know how to mute yourself? Uh, this camera on, camera off question, show people how to raise their hands. Um, make sure that if you are uh, uh, utilizing a presentation that you test your share screen function. Um, and if you're using uh, breakout rooms that you know how, you know, test that in advance as well. I mean, if you've done this 15 times before, you may not need to test every time, but, uh, but certainly the first few times that you use these functions uh, on, um, on, I'm going to be talking about Zoom because it's the one that I know the best, but, um, uh, you know, you might, you might want to uh, do that a little bit more. Uh, and then be aware of the room, right? We're not all in the same room, we're all in different rooms, uh, but I can see you all. I can, I, you know, I know who is uh, sitting at their camera and who has walked away. I can see that several of you are, are writing down notes, which is really exciting to me. Um, I can see, you know, sometimes people uh, smile and nod when I make a, a point that, that resonates with them. Like, look around, put your, when, as, uh, uh, when you are, um, are, are speaking or, or lead, leading an online meeting, uh, put the view on the Brady Bunch, is what I call it, you know, the gallery view, where you can see everybody's, uh, everybody's picture. And um, sometimes what I do is I hide the non video participants. Uh, if there's a lot of people and then some folks who uh, who don't have their their videos on and are potentially just, you know, listening in or not participating, I'll hide those so that then the folks who have their videos on are bigger and I can see their faces better. But look around and, and see who's engaged, who is not, and how are they engaging? What are they engaging around? Um, sometimes, you know, in discussion, I can see somebody wanting to talk. Just like you're in, you know, a, a room with people, you can still see that they want to say something or that they're, they're not quite agreeing with whatever. As the facilitator, sometimes I'll say, hmm, it looks like so and so has has some thoughts about that. Would you like to share? You know, like give them the option. Obviously, don't like put them on the spot. But uh, but it's harder to. It's not. It's not as um, on the online uh, uh, online meeting format. It it's not as organic to have that like back and forth unless there's maybe just two or three people on the call but even then you know there's the there's the delay and so forth so it can help to have a facilitator who's looking at all of those things um, to see when people might have input to give and to offer them that space and maybe let people know that you might do that and that you're not trying to put them on the spot you're just trying to offer them space <laughs> Um, practice active listening. So definitely as the, 
uh, as the facilitator, you want to be listening really closely to what people are saying um, and show them that you're that you're actively listening, not like futzing over here with your whatever thing that you need for the next thing. You know, if you need to take a, a couple moments in between agenda items to get your screen to the next thing, then that's great. But but make sure to you know show people that you're that you're paying attention. Um, and then utilize a PowerPoint presentation when it's useful. Um, sometimes it's better for people to all be able to see each other and that's difficult when there's a PowerPoint presentation, but it also can be a way for everybody to see the same information and also you can uh, uh, you can use not just a PowerPoint presentation, but as I'll show later in the uh, in the presentation, you can use a live document. Um, that either everybody has access to and and can see the live notes going into so that it's as though you're writing up on the chalkboard at the front of the room or um, or you actually share your screen and show them the notes that you're putting in right then. Okay, I'm I'm going to pause here just for one second to just kind of get a read are uh, um, how are people like do you have thoughts so far do you have questions um, I have a couple more slides and then we're going to do a quick exercise now I'm going to go back to my checklist yeah Eileen oh you're you're muted I sure, I sure was. Um, I was wondering if PowerPoint works with all uh, computers for the Zoom, because um, uh, it's wonderful to be able to see the uh, the grid of, of faces um, and um, also see the the screen because it's been a, a problem for me um, in doing a book group uh, discussion we were having and using visuals. Uh, I guess that's the question. Mm -hmm. Does it work with everybody? And do you actually need the program PowerPoint? You do not need the program PowerPoint. I can answer that question. In terms of being able to um, have your, uh, your participants be able to both see everybody and see the, power, um, uh, the PowerPoint presentation, um, there are view options about that. So I'm gonna see if, oh no, I don't think I can do a double share. So I think I have to maybe do a screenshot on this one, but there are options of, um, see I'm the host and so I can't show you what it looks like on your end to show you how to do it maybe well the, what I'll do is uh is send a, cu a couple screenshots I saw um Meryl asked if I was sending the uh the PowerPoint uh after the meeting I'm going to send the recording and the PowerPoint um okay. but also um you should be able to um s slide the um there, there's like a divider in between where the PowerPoint is on one side and where all the you know people's faces are on the other side. And you can slide that over to make the PowerPoint smaller and the people's faces bigger or the people's faces smaller and the PowerPoint bigger. Um, so that's one method that people can use if they uh, like, if you've been on the same slide for a while and you don't really need to see that, like you can slide that over and make people's faces bigger for a while and then, oh, you will go to the next slide. Okay, I'm gonna slide it over and make the PowerPoint bigger again. And what part of the, um, of Zoom uh, allows you to select that? Uh, there, 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 there have to, has to be at least 30 things to choose from. What's the name of it? Um, it, it doesn't have a name. It's like um, it, 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 there, there's there's lines in between where the where the PowerPoint is and where the pictures are. As you're looking at it right now, you should be able to see that. Are you in gallery view? I am in gallery. I've got your background with the you know the pretty blue and whites, and then you have the chick checklist with the spiral. That's mm -hmm. what I'm seeing. 
So that's and then do cool. you see do you see everybody's pictures as well? I do yeah. Uh -huh. And then in so in between it, there should be a couple of lines. And if you slide that back and forth, it should be able to increase and decrease the size of the PowerPoint. I don't know what lines you're talking about. I'm so sorry. On mine, I actually have to use my mouse. I am mm -hmm. using my mouse. Maybe what I'll do is, uh, is as I said, send some, um, some screenshots since I won't be able to show you that live right now since I'm the host. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but yeah. that's a good question. And I think something that a lot of people struggle with um, you know, wanting to see the presentation, but also wanting to see everybody's faces and be able to read the room themselves. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, uh, uh, Patricia, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I heard you say a lot of times we're on meetings with a lot of people and a lot of them have their, um, their cameras off, so you just see their name. And you said it's a way that you can like hide them. Hide them. How do you do that? So, for instance, um, Joanne doesn't have her uh, her video on. So, if you hover over her, you can see a box with three dots in it. And if you click on that, one of the options should say "Hide non-video participants." Okay, I see it. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna uh, move on to the next slide. We're at uh, a little over 40 minutes here. Okay, so here's some opportunities that you have when, uh, when having an online meeting. You can use the chat, which, you know, uh, uh, here today, Meryl um, asked me a, a question of if I would be sharing the PowerPoint. And then she also said, I'm so sorry, I have a, a important medical telephone call. And so of course she had to step away from the meeting. So that's uh, one way to use the chat. I have a couple of other um, examples here um, uh, of I um, am you can use it for introductions if you have a lot of people on the call. So I put in in the chat here that uh, I'm Emily Serafi Cox. I use she her pronouns from the Peace Development Fund. And then I put uh, a little description of our organization. We are a national public foundation that raises money from the people to support grassroots movements through grants, technical assistance, and capacity building. And then I'm happy to be here today. Um, there's also something called circle order. So uh, if you're doing um, oral introductions uh, or just want to get feedback from people, uh, um, want to make sure everybody is included, then you can um, help people to know when it might be their turn by putting into the chat an order. The, the facilitator can do this. So I just made up a, a group of these, uh, what is it here, seven people. So uh, Tony is gonna go first with her introductions and then Metzli uh, and then Shakita and then Anna, Amelie, Zachary, and then finally Ramna. And uh, so uh, that way then um, Metzli knows that she is next, you know, right after Tony. And Ramla knows that she has a while to think about what she's going to say in her introduction. <laughs> um, uh, this is used in one uh, uh, in a meeting that I have uh, that has like 25 people in it, um, and we each take you know two minutes at the beginning to introduce ourselves and answer an icebreaker question, and it really uh, helps the flow of that uh, of that meeting go on because there's not that sort of awkward pause of who's going next, who hasn't gone yet, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other way that you can use the chat is actually to, um, uh, to move along discussion. Um, so here, uh, this person has said, I agree with Shakita said and feel comfortable to move on, meaning like move on in the agenda. Thanks for answering my question about this program. So uh, uh, this person had asked 
uh, a question about a certain program going on and was happy with the answer and then was excited about whatever Shakita had said uh, and was ready to move on to the next topic, but didn't have to take time out of the agenda to like raise her hand and get recognized by the facilitator in order to say that. Um, but the facilitator then can be watching the chat in order to see that this person has said that they're ready to move on uh, and that they, uh, um, that the, the agenda, you know, then the, the facilitator can feel comfortable to, to move the agenda. And, uh, and here is just where the chat is down in, uh, in the, the little ribbon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. So some other opportunities are share screen, which we, which I've, I'm doing right now, and, and we talked about um, how uh, uh, how that looks for participants. Um, this is what it you know looks like for uh, for the person sharing the screen. That that green button that we're probably all familiar with by now. But here um, is an example of how it can be used. So here's an example agenda that they're doing welcome and introductions, they're doing an outreach program update, and then they're doing an event brainstorm. And the question is, what organizations should we invite to participate in the event? And so here, this person is sharing their screen and, uh, and putting in notes as people make suggestions. So the, uh, this, uh, I made up these organizations. They suggested uh, reaching out to the Progressive Neighbors Alliance, the Make Art Not Jails Collective, and Youth United for Justice. And then here they have D is empty because they're in the middle of, of, uh, of this brainstorm. So that's one way that then everybody can see, oh, my idea is up there. You know, it's just like that whiteboard or the, or the, the butcher paper uh, that we use for in-person in meetings. Uh, and then of course, record is a really uh, good tool to use as well. Today we're using it uh, so that folks who aren't able to be on the webinar uh, are able to watch it later. Um, but record is also uh, a, a good way for, for folks who, you know, maybe aren't able to, uh, like if you don't have good, uh, as good minutes as, uh, as Meryl's uh, um, uh, meeting that she attends, then, uh, then maybe, you know, recording is, is a way to, uh, to share out the, um, the proceedings of, of some decision making process. Um, or if, uh, if you're doing a webinar, then it's very useful for that too. Um, I talked about uh, breakout rooms. So if you are the host, and only if you're the host, if you're not the host, you can't do breakout rooms. But if you are the host, then you can create breakout rooms and you can put people into them. You can either have uh, Zoom assign automatically, which means that it's just kind of random, or you can assign manually and you get to pick how many breakout rooms there are. So for instance, today here we have uh, seven people um, in addition to myself who are on this call. So if I were to put you all in breakout rooms, I might uh, put you in three breakout rooms. Uh, so here I have it set for three breakout rooms and I would probably want to uh, have it assign automatically so that it just does it um, kind of randomly and uh, it'll tell me how many participants per room that means. And then I just click create and I can move people around if I notice, oh, uh, I accidentally am putting, uh, you know, uh, Metzli and Shakita in the same room and they're bo both on the leadership team and have already talked about this. They should probably be talking to some other folks from the regional uh, organizations instead. So I can move people around based on, uh, based on you know, whatever criteria um, might, might make sense for my meeting. Another thing that you can encourage people to use is, are the reactions. Um, so these are relatively new with Zoom. Um, there used to just be like maybe a thumbs up and a clap. But now there's a laughing and a wow and a heart and a celebration. There's no thumbs down, which I think is probably a good idea, especially, yes, Meryl, <laughs> thank you. 
Um, uh, uh, no thumbs down, which is a good idea for Zoom school, <laughs> especially. But uh, it, you know, perhaps doesn't make uh, it quite as useful for like voting that sort of thing um, within a Zoom meeting. Um, but it does give the opportunity for folks to, um, you know, in in um, consensus based decision making processes where you all sit in a circle and if somebody's saying something you agree with you kind of like wiggle your fingers up and down. This is sort of the uh, online equivalent of that. Um, you can also, you know, laugh at, at something that, you know, some joke that somebody said. Um, or, or or love on something or yes celebrate like Jean, Jane is. Um, oh, uh, Jane, are you trying to raise your hand? How, how do I? Oh, never mind. I didn't know how to delete it. It automatically goes away after 15, 20, 30 seconds, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good question. Um, this is also where the raise hand function is now. They've moved it. Um, and uh, uh, Kent, you know, raised his, his, uh, his online hand earlier, uh, uh, you know, other folks were just raising their hands in the uh, uh, in, uh, in real life. Um, and so I facilitate, uh, um, I'm on my local school board, uh, school committee for those of you who are in, uh, uh, in New England, um, the rest of the world calls it school board. And, uh, and so I facilitate some really contentious conversations at times. Um, and, uh, and so our you know, school committee members have lots of things they wanna say. So I uh, ask them to raise their hands and then in the participants tab of Zoom, I can see who has raised their hand and in what order they raised it. So I don't know if you noticed earlier, but Jane was raising her physical hand and Kent was raising his blue hand. And I said, okay, uh, you know, I had seen Kent's hand first uh, and Jane was raising her hand as well. So I said, okay, uh, Kent next and then Jane. So I'm letting Jane know that I'm getting to her next. Um, when, I, when I use the participants tab and I see all those blue hands lined up, sometimes I will say, I will just read out the order so people know how long it's gonna be until they get to ask their question. <laughs> uh, and I call that a stack. And that's you know something that I've utilized in in person meetings uh, for a long time. I used to have to write people's names down on a little scratch paper. Uh, so now Zoom does it automatically for me. <laughs> um, and then I have this here about mute. So we all know that folks can have a lot of background noise, you know, with online meetings. So one possibility is as the host, you can mute everyone and then just ask people to unmute when they want to talk or when they're being called on to talk and that reduces the, the background noise. Also, um, you know, if, uh, especially with, I've noticed with um, when people sign on on smartphones, they don't always know when they're on mute or when they're not on mute. And sometimes they'll accidentally unmute themselves because it's a touch screen, right? So they'll just accidentally touch it um, and unmute themselves. So um, I've noticed that with, uh, especially with smartphone users, that it's, uh, it's useful to actually mute people that, you know, stopping the whole meeting to ask somebody to mute and then waiting for them to mute, that takes a long time. So I have taken to just utilizing my host privileges to be able to just mute people and then move on. But, you know, when, if people do want to talk, then, to, uh, you know, obviously they can unmute themselves. Um, but, you know, let people know that, that you're gonna be doing that, uh, you know, if there's background noise or something like that, um, but let people know how they can participate because it is important for people to be able to participate. Um, you don't want just like dead silence during your meeting. Okay, I think that that, yeah, so now we're going on to the group exercise. So we're actually coming up on our hour um, and I've really loved the discussion that we're having. So I want to open it up for questions um, and then we can kind of assess whether or not we feel like we want to do the group exercise. Eileen. 
I saw I saw Eileen unmute, and so I, I thought that maybe she uh, wanted to to say something. Um, I was preparing. Uh, what are we discussing? Sure. Well, just if you have any questions or, or further things that you want to say. No, I was about to use the reactions. I, I was going to put a thumbs up and a clap. I've been enjoying this. Awesome. Great. Patricia? Um, so when you say a, a lot of times I'm in a large group or I'm hosting a large group and I'm, I'm not real uh, proficient with with uh, Zoom, but you said you can mute everyone. Is it a way to re mute everyone at the same time or do you have to mute each person individually? You can mute people individually, but there is a way to mute everyone all at the same time. And it's in the participants tab. You can't do it right now because you're a participant rather than the host, but in the participants tab, there is a button that says mute all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And that's, that is useful for those large meetings for sure. Um, is there anything that, oh, I'm going to, now I'm going to lower Patricia's hand. Um, is there anything that folks um, like uh, wanted to, oh, sorry, Meryl, you had something. Yes, um, my agency does not use Zoom. Um, we use Google Meet, mm -hmm. though, and, and though we are getting Zoom. I was just wondering when you share your screen, can you still see people's faces? Because on Google Meet, you cannot. Ah, uh, yes, I can see people's faces when I share my screen on Zoom. Yeah, I, uh, I have found Google Meet to not be as, to not have as many capabilities as Zoom. Yeah, there's a reason why Zoom kind of corners the market <laughs> for online meetings. For many years, it was WebEx, but I think WebEx is much better for webinars than it is for like participatory meetings. Um, so uh, what I was asking before was, is there anything that has kind of resonated from you, uh, for you that has been presented today? Or is there anything that you were hoping to come in here and either learn or hear about or a struggle you've been having that feels still a little unresolved? Well, uh, Eileen here. I. I just look forward to hearing your points about PowerPoint and, and, and how to put it together with the visuals of us. Mm -hmm. You said I mean, you've been sending that and that yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, and are you talking about from the, um, how to do that from the um, presenting side or from the participant side, like from the facilitator side or from the person watching? Uh, the facilitator, um, although oh. I, I, I know that the facilitator can um, pass the host's responsibilities over and uh -huh. um, share screen. And I, I've actually shared a screen. Um, uh, some well, most of the time it works. Uh, yeah, um, it, it, it's just, it, I'm, I'm working with somebody who is on a learning curve as I am. And so we're, we um, kind of fumble along. <laughs> okay, then I actually do have a way to do what you were talking about. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So here uh, is, uh, can you see now um, the, this ribbon up at the top with all of the Zoom options? Uh, view, uh, you mean the view options? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me, so when I uh, um, initially, okay, when I initially share my screen, this is what it looks like. Um, and I have two uh, screens, so that's why you'll see me looking at this screen instead of this screen. Um, so, uh, so here I have, um, when you, when you share on PowerPoint, um, you get actually two, um, 
or you can, if you have two screens, that's okay. With, when doing it, not with two screens, I guess it'll still look like this. So this is the, the shared PowerPoint that I have that I'm, you know, I'm sharing my screen that way. And then, um, uh, and then over here are the pictures of all of you. And if there were, you know, more than four of you, then what I could do is go here to show, show grid view. Cause right now you're in this like stacked uh, bit, but you can see this arrow means that there's more people there. So uh, you can show grid view and now uh, uh, it shows more of your, of your faces and I can make it bigger here in the corner. I can make it smaller. I can make it small all to just one person. Um, and I can still, you know, see what it is that I'm presenting over on the side. Eileen, does that, does that, uh, uh, was that what you were asking about? Um, evidently when um, my friend does this, uh, huh? we can't see each other and I'm not sure why. Huh. Okay. Um, and, but we're not using a PowerPoint. Uh, we have individual um, uh, sheets. I, I, I made up questions for the book discussion and uh, they got, you know, refined. We, we drafted them. And, um, and so she posts them um, kind of in, uh, well, say there's six uh, questions, two questions and then goes down to uh, another sheet of paper, which we wrote these on, and there's two more than two more than two more. So kind of scrolling. Now, yeah, and the other thing that disturbs me uh, as an aside is when the screen is shown, I can't type notes, so I have to write them. Mm -hmm. And I haven't found a Zoom that it, it allows me to do that. When you take over, you take over when you're a host. Ah, so there's something called view options and it'll automatically put you in full screen, but you can take it out of full screen. In fact, you can minimize it and just be able to see like a little box up at the top. Um, um, I will try that, but I, I haven't been able to type in and see full screen. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've made the screen smaller with the yes. view options. And of uh -huh. course that doesn't do the, the, the big screen. You just have a black background. I, I'm not sure I'm clear. I'm being clear to be honest. So you, so you're no longer able to see the PowerPoint when that happens is what you're saying. When, when you, when you make it uh, No, what I'm trying to say is I cannot type. I, I, mm -hmm. uh, instead of writing notes mm -hmm. um i uh you know like i've done mm -hmm. um i usually like to type them mm -hmm. and then uh try to keep up and and you know heck with this the typos and um you can't do that when someone is taking over a, a screen mm -hmm. um it, whether it's a hundred percent or fifty percent i don't know if somebody else has tried it and has had some success. I think there are apps you can download. Oh, thanks, Mary. Yeah, they're, you know? they're, a, little, they're a little tricky, but they're, they're, you know, and there's another one I want to think, is it, Emily, do you know maybe mo mo something like Memento? I mean, there are lots of different apps for note taking. There's Evernote and, uh, and you can also just, you know, open a, a Word document, which is probably, Eileen, what you've done before, and then have um, a side-by-side -side screen where you make the Zoom screen smaller and then have, you know, your notes on, on, on one side. So it's like a split screen that way. Um, I'm I mean, sorry, Word does that, allows you to do that? Uh, you can make this, this, the Word document screen smaller so that then you have them side by side. You okay, know what? Now, how about page? Because I work with an Apple and I don't have enough. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm on a PC right now, but I do have um, 
uh, I do have a Mac, so I know what you're talking about. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share my screen one more time, but I'm going to exit out of this. So now you see my, uh, my, my desktop background. So here I'm going to open a, a Word document. Pages is the same way. Uh, yeah. It'll open as a window. Um, and it's opening. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, that's, that's my, uh, not my dog, but <laughs> a friend's dog. So here I have my notes. Uh, and so I'll, I'll have my notes here. And then um, if, uh, and you can get zoom in there as well. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's about making the, you know, the window smaller or larger and in the views, uh, I don't have the view options on mine because I'm sharing my screen, but um, if you, you know, if you have those view options, then me, um, exiting full screen is the thing that you want to look for because full screen is where it takes up your entire screen and you can't do anything else. I'll, I'll try it with this uh, exiting full screen. Maybe that's been my problem all along. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And on, on Mac, um, there's the option of, uh, of minimizing or um, you can toggle between full screen and not full screen with the green, um, the green circle up in the corner. Um, yay. Uh, you would love a part two. Have to leave. Yes, no worries, no worries. Well, the 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 um, activity that I was going to have y'all do uh, was was going to be to just kind of plan a made up uh, uh, meeting and and utilize some of these ideas for you know how you might put your your meeting together. But I hope that you'll do that in real life. <laughs> and please, you know, report back to me about uh, how it goes. I always am looking for ways to um, improve these webinars and to learn from, um, you know, folks experience and, and, um, and uh, integrate that into, into future presentations. So let me know how it goes and, and if you uh, either succeed or fail. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. Thank you too. Hi, bye everybody. Bye. Thank you very much, Emily. It was very helpful. Oh, I'm so glad. I learned uh, really important, significant things. So thanks. Oh, good. <laughs> That's what we want. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>